My husband slapped me on our third wedding anniversary in front of the family. I was on the floor, but I was bubbling with excitement over my recent promotion and could wait to share the news on my third wedding anniversary with my husband and mother-in-law. But what happened next shattered everything I thought I knew. Instead of celebration, I was met with anger so fierce it took my breath away. In an instant, my husband stood up and slapped me hard across the face, leaving me reeling on the floor in pain and disbelief. In that moment, a fierce determination ignited within me. I knew I had to escape this toxic relationship, but revenge was on my mind, and within just weeks, my entire life was about to change in ways I never imagined. What happened next will leave you speechless. My name is Sandra, and I'm a financial analyst living in Houston, Texas. It's funny how life can change in the blink of an eye. I used to think that my life was going according to plan, that everything was perfect. But on the of my third wedding anniversary, everything changed. I remember that evening vividly. The sun was setting, casting a golden hue over the city, and I was excited. I had just received a significant promotion at work, something I had worked hard for over the past few years. I had prepared to share this milestone with my husband, Mark, and his mother, Mrs. Davis, during our anniversary dinner. I hoped for laughter, smiles, and maybe even a toast to celebrate my achievement. The restaurant was elegant, with soft lighting and the gentle clinking of glasses around us. As we sat at our table, I took a moment to appreciate the surroundings and the company. Mark had always been my biggest supporter, or so I thought. He smiled at me, his eyes full of anticipation, as I gathered the courage to make my announcement. Mark, Mrs. Davis, I said, my heart racing with excitement. I have some fantastic news. I've been promoted to senior financial analyst. The words hung in the air for a moment, and I waited for the applause, the cheers, or at least some words of congratulations. But instead, I was met with a heavy silence. Mrs. Davis's expression darkened, and I felt a chill run down my spine. Is this what we raised him for? She finally snapped, her voice dripping with disdain. To be overshadowed by his wife's career? I blinked, stunned by her reaction. I had expected pride, or at least a hint of happiness. Instead, it felt as though I had committed a crime. Mark shifted uncomfortably in his seat. I could see the conflict in his eyes. He wanted to support me, but he was caught between his wife and his mother. Mom, it's great news for Sandra. We should celebrate her achievement, he said weakly, but his voice lacked conviction. Mrs. Davis wasn't having it. What about starting a family, Sandra? Do you think a promotion can replace the joy of children? Her words were sharp, and I felt a wave of anger wash over me. I took a deep breath, trying to maintain my composure. I believe I can balance both my career and family, Mrs. Davis. This promotion is important to me. Mark looked down at the table, avoiding my gaze. Sandra, maybe we should consider what mom is saying, he murmured, his voice cold and distant. My heart sank. This wasn't the supportive partner I had thought I married. I can't just quit my job to satisfy your mother's expectations, I replied, trying to keep my voice steady. I deserve respect for my hard work. The atmosphere grew tense, and I could feel the eyes of other diners on us. Mark's demeanor shifted, and I saw the frustration build in him. You're being unreasonable, Sandra. You're my wife, not my competitor. Why can't you see that? His words felt like a slap in the face, more painful than any physical blow. This is not a competition, Mark. I'm trying to share my success with you. My voice trembled, and I could see tears welling up in my eyes. Mrs. Davis leaned in closer, her eyes narrow. You need to think about what's best for our family, not just your career ambitions. I felt trapped. This is who I am and I won't give it up. Not for anyone. The words escaped my mouth, fueled by anger and desperation. I was fighting not just for my career, but for my identity. Mark stood up suddenly, the tension in his body palpable. You don't get it, do you? You're putting your career above everything else. This is what marriage is about, sacrifice. In that moment, I could see the influence his mother had on him, twisting his views of our marriage into something suffocating. I had always believed we were a team, but now I felt like an outsider in my own life. 
Sacrifice shouldn't mean losing yourself. I shot back, feeling the heat rising in my cheeks. I deserve to have my dreams, too. The argument reached a boiling point, and in a shocking moment, Mark raised his hand and struck me across the face. The sound echoed through the restaurant, silencing the surrounding conversations. I fell to the floor, shocked and bewildered. For a moment, the world stood still. I couldn't believe what had just happened. My heart raced, and I felt the sting on my cheek, both from the slap and from the betrayal of someone I loved. As I lay there, tears streaming down my face, I realized that this was a turning point. The trust one had in Mark shattered in an instant, and I knew deep down that I couldn't stay in this toxic environment any longer. I pushed myself up from the floor, my heart pounding. I felt a surge of determination rising within me. I couldn't let this define me. I would not be a victim. I would reclaim my life. The evening had begun with excitement, but it ended in chaos. As I looked at Mark and Mrs. Davis, I understood that this was not just an argument. It was a wake-up call. I needed to take action, to break free from the chains of expectations and start living for myself. As I left the restaurant, I felt a mix of emotions swirling inside me. Anger, fear, and a flicker of hope. It was time to make a change, and I was ready to confront whatever lay ahead. I stumbled out of the restaurant, my heart racing, and my mind a whirlwind of emotions. The cool night air hit my face like a splash of cold water, grounding me in reality. I couldn't believe what had just happened. I felt humiliated, not just by Mark's actions but by the whole evening's unfolding. It was supposed to be a night of celebration, but it had turned into a nightmare. As I drove home, I replayed the events over and over in my mind. How had it come to this? The man I loved had struck me, and his mother's influence had turned him against me. I thought about the life we had built together, and the dreams I had held on to. I felt lost, like a ship adrift at sea. When I got home, the silence was deafening. I dropped my keys on the table and sat down, still in shock. The walls felt like they were closing in on me. I could hear the faint sound of my heart beating in my ears. I pulled out my phone and stared at the screen. There were no messages from Mark, no apologies, no concern, nothing that I called Rachel, my close friend and colleague. I needed someone to talk to, someone who would understand. After a few rings, she picked up, Sandra? Is everything okay? Her voice was filled with concern. No, Rachel, it's not okay. You won't believe what just happened. I said, my voice trembling. What happened? Are you all right? She pressed. I took a deep breath, trying to steady myself. I announced my promotion at our anniversary dinner, and it all went downhill from there. Mrs. Davis exploded, and then Mark, he hit me. Silence hung in the air for a moment. Oh my God, Sandra, are you hurt? She asked, her voice rising with alarm. I'm fine physically, but emotionally, I don't know, I admitted. I feel like everything I believed about our marriage has just crumbled. Listen, you need to get out of that situation. You don't deserve to be treated like that, Rachel said firmly. Her words were a lifeline, pulling me back from the edge of despair. I know, but it's complicated. We've been together for years, and I thought we were happy. I replied, my voice cracking. Sometimes the people we love can change, especially under pressure. You need to think about what's best for you now, she urged. As I listened to Rachel, a wave of realization washed over me. I had sacrificed so much for this relationship, and now I was left feeling lost and alone. I think I need to talk to a divorce attorney, I said finally. The words tasting foreign yet liberating. Do it. I'll be here for you every step of the way, Rachel assured me. You deserve to find happiness. After hanging up, I felt a mix of fear and determination. The thought of taking that step terrified me, but it was also empowering. I knew I had to reclaim my life, and that meant making hard decisions. The next morning, I woke up with a heavy heart, but a clearer mind. I called a divorce attorney recommended by Rachel. Hello, my name is Sandra. I need to file for divorce, I said as soon as the call connected. Understood. Can you come in this afternoon to discuss the details? The attorney replied. Yes, I'll be there, I said, hanging up with a sense of resolve. I was taking control, one step at a time. At work, 
I tried to maintain some semblance of normalcy, but I could feel the weight of the previous night's events pressing down on me. My boss, Mr. Roberts, noticed my distraction during our morning meeting. Sandra, is everything all right? You seem a bit off today, he asked gently. I'm dealing with some personal issues, but I'll manage, I replied, forcing a smile. You know you can talk to me if you need to, he said. His voice filled with understanding. Thank you, Mr. Roberts. I appreciate it, I said, feeling grateful for his support. It was comforting to know I had allies at work. Later that day, Rachel surprised me with lunch. I thought you could use a break, she said, sliding into the chair across from me. How did the meeting with the attorney go? I haven't gone yet, I admitted. I'm nervous about what's next. Just take it one day at a time. You're stronger than you think, Sandra, she encouraged. I felt a glimmer of hope at her words. As the afternoon wore on, I found myself lost in my work, trying to escape the emotional turmoil swirling within me. I focused on the numbers, the spreadsheets, the analysis, anything to keep my mind occupied. Finally, the time came for my appointment with the attorney. I took a deep breath before stepping into the office, my heart pounding. The attorney, a middle-aged woman named Karen, welcomed me with a warm smile. Let's get started, Karen said, her tone professional yet empathetic. Tell me what's been going on. I shared my story, detailing the emotional and physical struggles I had faced. As I spoke, I felt a sense of empowerment growing within me. I was no longer just a victim. I was taking action to change my life. Sandra, it sounds like you've made the right choice for yourself. You deserve to be in a healthy, supportive environment, Karen said, her words resonating deeply. After our meeting, I left the office feeling a mix of anxiety and exhilaration. I had taken a significant step toward reclaiming my life. The path ahead would be challenging, but I was ready to face it head on. I would no longer be defined by someone else's expectations. I would find my voice, my strength, and my freedom. The weeks following the anniversary dinner were a whirlwind of emotions and hard decisions. After my meeting with Karen, my divorce attorney, I began the difficult process of detaching my life remarks. Each day felt like a mix of dread and hope, a constant battle between my fears and the determination to reclaim my identity. At work, I buried myself in projects, with my promotions still fresh in my mind. I focused on proving myself, not only to my colleagues, but to myself. Mr. Roberts, my boss, continued to check in on me. Sandra, you're doing excellent work. If you need to talk, I'm here, he said one afternoon. Thanks, Mr. Roberts. I appreciate your support. I replied, feeling grateful for his understanding. One evening, Rachel, my closest friend, texted me. Let's celebrate your new beginning. How about drinks this weekend? Her message brought a smile to my face. I needed this, an escape, a chance to feel normal again. Absolutely. I could use some fun, I replied, excitement bubbling within me. That Saturday, we met at a lively bar downtown. The atmosphere was warm, and I felt a rush of energy as I walked in. Rachel waved from a corner table, and I joined her, feeling the weight of the past few weeks start to lift. Cheers to new beginnings, Rachel exclaimed, raising her glass. To new beginnings, I echoed, clinking my glass against hers. We chatted about work, my promotion, and the future. I revealed my plan to start a mentorship program for young women in finance. I want to help them navigate challenges like I faced, I shared. That's a brilliant idea. You'd be an amazing mentor, Rachel encouraged. As the night progressed, I felt lighter and more like myself. I was rediscovering my passions and dreams. The laughter and connection with Rachel were just what I needed to reignite my spirit. The following week, I met with Helen, the industry contact who had invited me to speak at a conference. I'm so glad you decided to join us, Sandra. Your story can inspire many, she said, as we settled into a cafe. I hope so. I want to empower others to find their voice, I replied, feeling a surge of determination. As the conference date approached, I carefully prepared my speech, weaving in the lessons I had learned. The night before, I practiced in front of the mirror, feeling a mix of nerves and excitement. On the day of the conference, as I walked onto the stage, the weight of the moment enveloped me. The room was filled with women, 
all eager to hear what I had to say. My heart raced, but as I began to speak, I felt a sense of purpose fill me. I stand here today as a survivor, someone who has faced the storm and emerged stronger. I began. I shared my journey, and the audience responded with nods of understanding. I know what it's like to feel trapped, to think your dreams don't matter. But your voice matters, and you deserve to pursue your passions, I said, my conviction growing stronger. When I finished, the applause was thunderous, and I felt overwhelmed with emotion. Women approached me afterward, sharing their stories and thanking me for my honesty. I realized I was not alone in my struggles, and that connection filled me with hope. In the following days, I focused on planning my mentorship program, reaching out to local universities eager to connect with young women ready to carve their paths in finance. As I immersed myself in this new venture, I felt invigorated. I was no longer just Sandra defined by someone else's expectations. I was Sandra, a mentor, a leader, and a voice for change. Even as I thrived professionally, Mark continued to reach out, desperate to repair the damage. I ignored his calls and texts, focusing instead on my newfound purpose. I was learning to set boundaries, valuing my well-being above all else. One night, I received a message from Laura, a mutual friend. Mark's been asking about you. He says he regrets everything she wrote. It's too late for that, I replied, my heart heavy but resolute. I had moved on, and I was ready for whatever came next. As the months passed, I found my footing in this new chapter of my life. My mentorship program gained traction, and I began connecting with young women eager to forge their paths in finance. I felt a renewed sense of purpose, something I hadn't felt in a long time. One Saturday, I hosted the first meeting of the program at a local cafe. As I watched the eager faces of the participants, I felt a rush of excitement. Welcome, everyone. I'm so glad you're here. I began my voice study. Today, we'll share our stories and discuss the challenges we face in our careers. The discussions were vibrant and heartfelt. Each woman shared her experiences, and I realized how powerful our connections could be. I was no longer just telling my story, I was helping others find their voices, too. After the meeting, a young woman named Mia approached me. Thank you for creating this space. I've been struggling to find my place in this industry, she said, her eyes bright with hope. That's exactly why I started this program. I replied, smiling. You belong here, and we'll support each other. With each meeting, I grew more confident in my role as a mentor. I also began to explore new opportunities for myself. Helen invited me to speak at another conference, and I eagerly accepted. This time, I felt less nervous and more empowered. I was ready to share not just my struggles, but also my triumphs. As I prepared for my speech, I reflected on how far I had come. I no longer felt like the woman who had been slapped in front of family or trapped in a toxic relationship. I was Sandra, a woman who had risen from the ashes and was determined to make a difference. The day of the conference arrived, and as I stepped onto the stage, I felt the familiar flutter of nerves. But they were accompanied by excitement. I began, today I want to talk about resilience and the power of community. Together, we can overcome anything. Afterward, the audience's applause was overwhelming. I realized I was not just speaking, I was connecting. I had transformed my pain into strength and was using it to uplift others. As I drove home, I felt a deep sense of fulfillment. My past was still a part of me, but it no longer defined me. I was building a life on my own terms, filled with purpose and hope. I was ready to embrace whatever the future held, confident that I had the strength to face it all.